Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about contrast. We talked in general about contrast in a previous video. There should be a link uh, maybe down below, maybe up here. Somewhere there will be a link. Uh, as usual, down below there's a PDF version of these slides. Now, in that discussion about contrast in the previous video, we're going to apply it to this example. This example is about finding a scab on potatoes and trying to reduce the amount of scab. And to reduce the scab, we're going to add sulfur onto the plots. Uh, in this example, there were three different sulfur, well, really four different sulfur levels. No sulfur, that's zero. 300, 600, and 1200, what was it, pounds per acre of sulfur. And then uh, we also had a fall application versus a spring application. And uh, so what we might be interested in is understanding, does the amount of sulfur that you add affect how much scab you see? And it does spring versus fall application affect how much scab you see? And so we might have these kinds of scientific questions. The first one very generally is, look, does it have any impact at all? Should we even bother looking at these data anymore? If the answer is yes, then we might want to dive into it deeper. We might want to say, all right, what's the difference between spring and fall application? And then finally, how much does the, uh, the, how does the sulfur amount affect how much scab you actually see. And now, as the uh, paragraph up here states, this was a completely randomized experiment. So we're gonna take a little bit look at that first, then we'll get into the data. Scratch that, here's the data. Uh, what, the only thing I really wanna point out from this data is a couple of things. One, that we have a row and column, so we'll see that in a second. But we also have a situation where the application timing, fall and spring, you'll see some places where it says missing. And the reason it says missing is because when you add zero sulfur, then it doesn't really matter when you, whether you add zero in the fall or in the spring. And so that column really doesn't make any sense at all when no sulfur is added. Uh, and then the final column here is just going to be a quick way of de determining the treatment. So the quick hand, the short hand here, zero, no sulfur at all, F, and then the amount was fall, and then the amount the times 100 that was added, and then S, the amount is the same thing, but now in spring. All right, so here is a depiction of the experimental design of the experiment. Apparently there was a field of four rows and eight columns, the 32 uh, total fields that, or, that we could actually do the experiment on. And then we randomly assigned all the different combinations uh, such that every combination is represented four times. And sort of in theory, there's four of the fall zero application and four of the spring zero application. But in reality, that really just means that there were eight observations where there was no sulfur added at all. So this is another way of depicting that experimental design, but now it has to do with more with the treatment levels. So you can see we have fall and spring, and we have 300, 600, 1200, so there's four of each of those. But then there is the zero sulfur, and since fall and spring doesn't matter, I've kind of written the box here to span both of those, and there were eight observations that were at zero sulfur level. Now if we start looking at the data, here's one way of depicting the data. What I've done here on the x-axis is I've put no sulfur in the middle, and then more sulfur going to each side. I've put then, going away from zero, the amount of sulfur that we use. So zero in the middle, then the 300, 600, and then 1200 pounds per acre. And certainly you can sort of see a pattern that goes up and back down, indicating that if you have no sulfur, you have higher scab. Uh, and then if you look at fall versus spring, it seems like maybe there is more scab if you apply in the spring as opposed to if you apply in the fall. Another way of looking at these data is to just put sulfur on the x-axis, put the scab on the y-axis. Now we have different colors and shapes for fall, spring, and missing. You can see all the missing observations are over there and sulfur is zero. And now you can try to look at this to determine what the effect of sulfur is it looks like overall there's a decreasing pattern. And it's a little bit, maybe you can also see that generally the fall values are smaller than the spring values for the same sulfur amount. Uh, if we wanted to look at this spatially, we could look at the scab percent versus the column ID. Uh, and now we have color representing the amount of sulfur and we have the shape representing the application type. And we can see here, well, maybe there's sort of an increasing pattern, or maybe it goes up and it comes back down. So we'll come back to that later. We can do the same thing for rows, but this time, eh, we don't really see much going on here at all. All right, now let's get back to that topic at hand. The topic at hand is trying to get contrast to answer these scientific questions of interest. In order to do so, we're gonna construct a model. 
Here we're going to go with the ANOVA model. J is going to represent those treatments, so it's going to be numbered 1 to 7. And our response then is the average scan percent. We have a normal model, same assumptions as usual. Uh, and now these are the kinds of scientific hypotheses that we want. Uh, is there any difference amongst any of these means? And we're going to answer that first off with a one-way ANOVA F-test. Then we might be interested, if there is an effect somewhere, we might be interested in, uh, how about control versus any sulfur? Okay, then we might say, well, how about that fall versus spring? And then finally, right, what kind of effect does sulfur level have on the scab percent? And so you can see the last three are all going to be addressed by some kind of contrast. The first two you've seen before in a previous video, and then we'll also talk about this linear trend version as well. All right, so to start off with, let's talk about the sulfur effect. Is there any effect of sulfur? Uh, this contrast we're going to construct by saying, look, we have one group that has no sulfur, and then we have a bunch of other groups that have some sulfur, and so we're going to compare those two means. So here, that mu subscript zero, although that kind of looks like a capital O, but that one is gonna indicate no sulfur at all. And then the other ones here are all the other sulfurs. There are six of those, and so we're gonna take their average. That's why we have the one-sixth times uh, that whole quantity. Now, uh, in the second, it's gonna be nice to write this in R as having a single divisor. So I'm just gonna rewrite this slightly to pull into the parentheses that mu zero. Okay, and when we pull it into the parentheses, then we need to multiply it by six. So now we can see that the coefficients we have are within the parentheses are all ones and then a negative six, and we're gonna divide that whole quantity by six. Okay, that's our first contrast. Remember, contrast is just a linear combination that of these means, right? We're looking at the coefficients. Those coefficients have to sum to zero. That makes it a contrast, and these are coefficients do. If we look at fall versus spring application, well, we have three means that are fall, three means that are spring, one that's neither. And so what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have one third times all the fall application plus zero times that no sulfur application plus negative one third uh, of the uh, spring applications. Again, if this is zero, this indicates there's no effect of fall versus spring. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna pull out the one third. If I pull out the one third here, you can just see a bunch of ones and then you got that zero for the uh, mu not the no sulfur mean, and then negative one for all the spring. Okay, so we've gotten a number of the different contrasts here. The last one is talking about the linear trend. The linear trend is a little bit tricky, but if you think about the uh, explanatory variable value that's associated with all these different means, then we have, depending on whether you want to do in pounds per acre or this time 100 pounds per acre, we have 12, 6, 3, 0, 3, 6, 12. Uh, and the way that we construct the linear trend contrast is to take those values for the explanatory variable and subtract their overall mean. The overall mean of that set of values is negative six, and so, uh, sorry, is six, so when we subtract six, then we get these, this resulting uh, linear trend. So we have the six, the zero, the negative three, negative six, negative three, zero, and six. That is going to be the coefficients for the associated uh, means that we have for the fall and spring application and the no sulfur application. Okay, so uh, there it is, right? That's it right there. I'm going to now pull out the six. Sorry, no, I didn't pull out the six. So never mind. Okay. All right, so if we put these all together in a single table, this is the set of contrast that we have. We have the sulfur versus control, the fall versus spring, and the linear trend, and then the coefficients associated with each of the different seven means that we have in our data set. And then you see the last column, the div, that's the divisor, right, where you saw us dividing by six and three. Um, there is a better way to construct the linear trend contrast that will provide a more meaningful uh, interpretation to the estimates that you actually get for that contrast. Uh, and that's just a little bit beyond the scope of what we're gonna talk about here. So we're gonna leave it like this and just have a, is there a trend or is there not a trend? All right, if we're gonna do it in R, we construct our list of contrasts, just like we did in the previous video. We fit our regression model. Uh, our very first scientific question had to do with, is there any effect of uh, application of sulfur at all? That is represented here down in our F statistic and the associated, associated p-value in our ANOVA table. That small p-value, barring 
uh, problems with model assumptions, and that small p-value to indicate that there's some means that are different with others. So before we go too far, we should definitely take a look at those model assumptions. So here's a set of model diagnostics that try to assess those model assumptions. Uh, if we look at this, um, certainly the QQ plot looks okay. Cook D doesn't look too terrible. There's no observations that are too high. We see possibly an increasing variance pattern, both in the residual plot where there's sort of this trumpet pattern, but also in the bottom middle, middle plot where there's generally an increasing trend, right? The smoother line gives you a little dip there, but probably not too much to look at. So maybe a little bit of increasing variance. But other than that, overall, these assumptions uh, seem well met by these data. And we'll come back to that increasing uh, variance in a second. Well, at the end. Okay, so uh, we saw in the previous video that once you fit the regression model, you can use the EM means function from the EM means package to calculate the means for each of our different groups. So there are those estimated means for the different groups. And then we can construct the contrast that are of interest by using those estimated means along with our contrast list that was represented in K on the previous slide or two slides ago. And now we can see our contrast here. So sulfur versus control. And we have now our 95% confidence in credible intervals here. That sulfur versus control seems like, yes, in fact, sulfur has uh, an impact on reducing the scab percentage. We can see in terms of fall versus spring, that fall application seems to be better at removing, uh, reducing scab percent than spring. Uh, and we have our linear trend here, which again, we can't make out too much of the actual values of those numbers, but we know that the confidence and credible interval does not include zero, so it's significant. If we had just taken the contrast output, we would have gotten a p-value, and that's what you'll see on the summary slide. Um, before we get to the summary, I just want to comment about one thing that probably bears more investigation here. If you look at the effect of the uh, columns, right? So there's the spatial orientation of the plots. We do see some kind of pattern here where there's sort of some curvature in terms of low scab percent on the left and higher scab percent on the right. Probably something that if you were designing future experiments, you would want to provide some kind of blocking here to remove any possibility that that is causing the uh, significance that we see in our other treatment variables. Okay. So if you were to summarize this particular analysis for a manuscript, you might say something like this, that there was a significant difference in means between the groups, all right? And here's an ANOVA F statistic. You provide the degrees of freedom and you provide, um, it's, yeah, six, because there were seven diets, that makes sense. The F statistic along with the p-value, all right? That was from our ANOVA table. Then you might say that uh, having sulfur was associated with a reduction in scab percent of nine, with a 95% interval of 4 to 15 compared to having no sulfur. You might say that fall application reduced scab percent by 6 with an uncertainty interval there, both confidence and credible of 0.5 to 12 compared to spring application. And finally, there was a linear trend in sulfur and it was significant. Um, and there's the p-value. Now, if you're doing this for a manuscript, you might want to go and investigate a little bit more about this spatial correlation amongst the columns. Uh, and finally, you might want to consider using a logarithm of the scab percent. One of the reasons is if you have the, if you look at the estimated mean a couple of slides ago for the fall application of 1,200 pounds per acre, you'll see that you have an estimated mean and its uncertainty of negative 1.2. Since scab percent has to be positive, that lower endpoint doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, secondly, we spotted that possibly non-constant variance, and so those, both of those will be uh, fixed if you take a logarithm of scab percent and analyze that instead with the slight increase in difficulty of interpretation. But it's just a log, right? It just turns into multiplicative effects, nothing too big, nothing that you can't handle. Okay, so that was our two slides or two videos on contrast. I hope you liked it. In the next couple of slides, we'll start talking about experimental design. Hope to catch you there.